we're going to go into an overview of Geographic Information Systems, aka GIS, and ArcGIS Pro. Now we're using Esri's uh, ArcGIS Pro version 3.2.1. That's the most uh, updated version that we're aware of as of January 2024. Updates will come out fairly regularly as patches, etc. It's always recommended that when working with this software, you use the most updated version. So we'll begin by answering the question, what exactly is a geographic information system or systems? And what they are is they're computerized systems designed for the storage, retrieval, and analysis of geographically referenced data. I'm not gonna go through every aspect of this slide, but this is how Esri, the Environmental Systems Research Institute Incorporated, who are the developers of ArcGIS and ArcGIS Pro, uh, this is how they define what GIS is. And as we spoke about in the introduction, it really is a way to organize, analyze, visualize all kinds of data not necessarily always related to city planning, but I hope that you can see the usefulness in the planning world. The importance of GIS really answers the following. The location, so where something is and what is at that location, what we call feature classes, which we'll talk more about that later on. The trends, so what has changed since. Patterns, if spatial patterns exist. And then we can start to model those things. We can start to ask those what if questions. And we can do that through a variety of analysis tools that GIS supplies for us. When you start the software, it's going to have no data in it. That data is gonna come from all kinds of real world information and inventories. Say, if it's a housing sites inventory, you may wanna start with parcel data. If it's a transportation network, you'll probably want to start with a streets data layer. And several jurisdictions will have these readily available. Some don't. Some will require data to go out and be collected and to be cataloged for you. That's another skill as part of the broad scope of GIS. Once we have real world information and an inventory, that gets put into these containers, these databases. And that's an important term that we're gonna talk about later on, which is geo databases. But essentially, we contain all of this data, and then what that does is it outputs a map of sorts. It outputs geographic information. So this data has geography attached to it that we can later display. And that is where the crux of the analysis comes in and it moves us from a whole lot of complicated numbers and file names into something that is consumable by the general public or elected officials and urban planners. So now we're gonna get into some of the technical aspects of ArcGIS and how that data is organized. And really what we want to consider is the fact that there are two different types of data itself. And the first type is called vector data. The important takeaway here is there are three types of map features that ArcGIS works with. And those would be points, lines, and polygons. Points would be, and all of these would be useful for displaying different types of data depending on what it is and the scale of which you are trying to show. For example, if you are, say, showing a map of the entire United States and you want to show cities with a population of over 5 million, that may be best shown in points. Now, the other type of data that ArcGIS Pro works with is called raster data. And raster data differs from vector data in that it is a raster image. We take an aerial shot, for example, and if we want to overlay that onto our map, that would be in the form of a raster image. And I have a couple of descriptions here, but really what it's saying is that the data point that the software is reading is embedded within the pixels of the raster data. And I wanna be clear as well, raster data is not simply a photograph. Raster data can actually be analyzed as well. 
there are several raster analysis tools within the software that could produce, say, a hillshade analysis so that we could see different slopes, then lead us to an analyze uh, elevation lines uh, or contour lines so that we can then output that into vector data and then we can generate data analysis from that. When you open an attribute table you're in the software, you're going to see a list of data, essentially, and that's what this is. At the top, you're going to have what are called fields, and these are our columns. And to understand the fields means to understand what pieces of data are available, and that will enable you to understand which questions you can ask. Even if you don't know how to ask the question yet, understanding those fields is critical. So in the next chapter, we're going to learn how to interface with the software, and I'm going to teach some basic navigation skills so that when you do receive data and you put it in your software into the program, then you'll be able to start to look for where to answer those questions. Thank you.